So, do you think your financial institution tells you everything you need to know? Don't bank on it, but I'm <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Business and economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis is here to reveal the top five things your bank doesn't want you to know. So, of course, we want to know all five. Yes, of course. We do. Becky, good morning. You say the first thing is bigger is not necessarily better. Yeah, and what I mean by that mm. is sometimes these big commercial banks, they seem more convenient. Mm -hmm. There's an ATM on every corner. There's a location almost everywhere you go. But ultimately, you end up paying a little bit more for that in many cases. The bigger banks tend to charge higher fees fees than some of the smaller community banks, mm. the credit unions. You can bank online, get a little less service in many cases because you're not interacting with them as much, but you're paying a lot less. Oh, you're, you're disappointing me, Mrs. Hanson. <laughs> She's a newlywed because when I first moved to the city, I walked around my neighborhood, I walked around work, and I saw Chase everywhere, and that's right. why I went with Chase. And you're saying, uh... Well, listen, uh, you didn't necessarily make the wrong decision there with going with Chase, but the reality is these banks, they do make more money on the fees fees than on anything else. I mean, anywhere between $4 and $20 is the average monthly fee that you're going to pay on banks. Wells Fargo, by the way, just came out a couple weeks ago. They are going to be charging now in six new states a $7 fee on checking accounts. So these fees, I wow. mean, they're a huge money generator for the banks. They do add up. $38 billion is what they added up to last year. So the fees are something to watch out for. So that's number two on Number your list. two. Watch are, for the fees. Are Read they, the fine print. Are they negotiable, the fees? This is the nice thing, and, and a lot of people don't know I'm this. I'm always looking for a deal. The banks aren't necessarily going to be forthcoming with this, but if you're charged a fee and you don't want to be charged that fee and you're a loyal customer to the bank, go back to them. Ask them, can you remove this? Because a lot of them have an unwritten policy that if you're a good customer, they'll take that fee off of your bill because they want to keep you. Okay, so we've got three things now. Number four, though, you say, despite being a loyal customer, <laughs> it may not always get you the best deal. Right, and this is the thing that people should know. Whenever you're looking for a loan, a new credit card, any new form of banking that you would like to do, shop around. And a great place for that is bankrate.com. And you said that just because you've signed up for a bank and there's rewards, I'm not trying to shield for uh, Chase, but the other day <laughs> when I was in there, they said, you know, we're offering Nick's tickets. Are you interested? And I went, no, I can't go. And then I changed my mind and called them back. They said, too late, they're gone. But you're saying sometimes those rewards come with a catch. I didn't see a catch in offering tickets to the Knicks game. Well, it's very interesting because a lot of people don't recognize that the rewards programs oftentimes are taxable. So if you receive a big reward mm. in excess of $600, you could be taxed on that. And in many cases, the bank will actually take care of the taxation for you. And what I mean by that is they're going to give you the tax forms at the same time they do it. So if those Knicks tickets, I don't know what Knicks tickets go for, Gail, these days. I don't think they were 600. Okay. <laughs> so if they're below 600, you're probably okay. But if they're above that amount and you're collecting more than that in rewards, even if it's not a dollar amount, if it's a point balance that equates to a dollar amount, you could be charged if for there's, it. So if there's taxes. any sort of monetary value. Yes. You can now, tax in income. excess of $600 right. is, the, is the key point here. Wow. Could we please just have a rule that please don't give me a gift that requires that I have to pay taxes? <laughs> I mean, literally, there's there's a lot of gifts that require people to pay taxes. Oh, I know. So, Good I know, but I understand. I understand. And, and the banks, they don't necessarily have to. In all of these cases, it is within the bank's rights legally to not talk about these things. Yeah. So once again, the onus is on us as the consumer to do our due diligence. You have to read the fine print. And you to have to be aware. Call Rebecca Jarvis for help. Yes, call Becky, me. Thank My you. My lines are open. <laughs> Your number is <laughs> no way, Gail. Okay. <laughs> thank you.